so Sim, uh, uh, thanks for having us over here at uh, the, uh, the Estonia showroom in, uh, in Tallinn. You're the government's digital policy advisor. Uh, so what, is it, what does that mean? Well, basically that means uh, lots of meeting and talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so what I do is that uh, my job is to coordinate the digital policy issues across the government. So making sure we have a uh, strategy in place and we execute that in all parts of government. Okay, and, and uh, we were talking before the interview about running a country as a, as a platform. And I think it's really, really exciting, especially also when you were talking about, okay, what is a country? Uh, the same, I also had the same discussion with some crowdfunding platforms mm -hmm. when I asked them, okay, are you going to, to be an uh, enemy of the banks? Then they all say, okay, but Martijn, what's a bank? Right. S so, uh, running a country as a platform, um, what are you doing right now about that? So actually, I mean, we've been down that path for quite some time now. So uh, let's say how we have seen the role of government when it comes to digital policy and we, how we've seen, let's say, the role of, uh, you know, government CIO and sort of central agencies in IT uh, in Estonian and public sector is exactly to provide the platforms to create an environment. So, uh, for example, uh, all Estonians uh, carry an identity card, right? So uh, this is basically, you know, my key to the government. That's a platform, right? Every government agency, every private sector entity can use that to authenticate the users. Uh, we have something called XROAD, which is a data exchange environment connecting all parts of government for secure data transmission. Uh, again, a platform that everybody can use. So we've been exactly thinking in this line for very practical reasons, for cost saving and so forth for quite some time. And, um, and yeah, we still sort of keep that strategy in a way improving the things we already have and then extending and adding to them. So for example, e-residency is, is an extension of an, our digital identity platform to the non-residents, to all the sort of, you know, again, global friends abroad, exactly becoming a platform in itself in a way. And uh, this sounds really good and, uh, and cool and I think uh, that's something that every country should do, but in practice it's quite different. Uh, like uh, I'm from Netherlands and the Dutch government uh, were talking about uh, IT projects and data. Uh, they have no idea how to do it. Same like with digital voting uh, um, uh, about the uh, files uh, uh, of the hospitals and, uh, and, and, and the doctors, so, so the medical files. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? Well, I think there's, again, this belong in the making, right? So perhaps our sort of advantage or luck was that we started a bit earlier than most of other governments really. At having at the same time, of course, um, we had the luck of no legacy. Many other governments perhaps had already been built up a bit of legacy, so we could be starting from scratch when the internet was really taking off, I'm talking in the late 90s here, right? But um, skipping the history lesson, I think there's been two or three factors to our success. One has been really, I still come back to the platform issue. So uh, we've taken lots of, let's say, development trouble and, and cost away by, from the very early on, making sure that, you know, platforms for things that everybody needs, like authentication, data sharing, are that jointly makes it so much easier to come up with new services to build on top of these and have more sort of you know, digital things, services, solutions, you know, for people to use at the end of it. So that's one part, the platform thinking and, and providing. Secondly, um, we've had um, luck and benefit of leadership. I mean, now uh, politicians, our sort of, you know, public sector and especially the private sector leaders have been very sort of forward thinking and pushing to do more in these lines, willing to take the risks even, right? Not perhaps knowing, you know, what's the full outcome of some initiative, but really sort of, you know, willing to try this out. If it works, expand on that. I mean, e-residence is the latest on the line, right, uh, of this kind of new idea, which we don't really fully, 100% yet know how it will fly, but we have some ideas and, you know, exactly as it, as it proves itself, we expand on that. Uh, so risk taking and this leadership thing. And third, um, we very clearly understood uh, that uh, it's actually not a technology thing, but uh, it's change management within government, within public sector. So, uh, so it's the attitude, the mindset has been, you know, how are we transforming the government, the governance, not are we using IT the right way. So again, so that means that basically you tackle the problems, you solve the problems from a different way and, and perhaps hopefully more effectively. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so also, uh, so, so everybody who's living over here uh, cuts the card and the card reader, and, and that's, uh, that's it's also the authentication uh, to get online to all your data. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you as an a, a, a individual can decide who can see uh, which of my data. Exactly. So uh, basically with a card, uh, you get two functions. Uh, and actually, I should say that these days, the two... two um, carriers of identity. One is an ID card, basically, yeah, I mean, you know, has my photo on, works as a, as a physical real-life ID as well. But there's also a mobile version, so the same sort of, you know, chip 
is on my mobile SIM card. So yeah, most people, inclu my included, who use a mobile, they rather prefer that now. Especially as with tablets and, and mobile devices, there's nowhere to stick the card in anyway, right? Uh, so yeah, but so what it gives you, first of all, yes, you can securely log in uh, and use any service online or, or let's say in electronic mode, and you can authorize transactions with uh, digital signature that is legally fully valid. So basically, um, any transaction, any sort of thing you're thinking about can be uh, digital if there's a legally valid, valid way to you know, authorize. There doesn't have to be any paper then involved at all, right? The reason why I say is that so many services you know, other elsewhere in the world where basically at the end of the day, the very last thing still has to be on paper, even if everything beforehand <laughs> happens electronically. In our case, no, it can stay there because we can attach a signature and really sort of, you know, as we would do by handwriting. And um, so, so what it allows is that, so yeah, I mean, we can use many things, and uh, which means that basically, yeah, we can also access our data, uh, submit declarations to government uh, or applications to government. Prime Minister can send a law to the parliament. The businessmen don't have to meet to make a business contract. I mean, everything becomes so much more conveniently and efficiently available to you. Yeah. And looking uh, inside the government, so so everybody also, uh, is also forced. To, to use this, this platform uh, for everything? So within government, uh, if you're a public agency, you're offering, let's say, coming up with the newest public uh, digital service, yes, you have to reuse the authentication platform, uh, extra for data exchange, and so forth. So yeah, this is to ensure that, you know, exactly we all are interoperable and, and again, making it easier for you to work on your things. Yeah, and, and say, okay, it, it's not about technique, but it's about change management. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, implementing this, and of course, your, uh, the, your country is, is busy with it already for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So that's a really a big advantage uh, on, on, on everybody else in, in, the, in the world. But there's also some change management, of course, within the own government. So mm -hmm. at, at, at what way, uh, uh, when you start a new big project, do you convince others, uh, your <laughs> colleagues, uh, to join? Well, I mean, um, as, as I think uh, we've we spoken before, it's a, it's a character and a stick thing, <laughs> either or, right? So basically, you convince them and you, <laughs> you, you provide them some benefits, a stimulus, or uh, like, like we say about using platforms in, in, within government, you have to. So exactly, you can also create laws and regulations and you know, make others to follow you. No, but, but, but truly answering your question, so um, you have to induce people and first of all, you know, also actually prove them. I mean, that, you know, something that you're trying to pull through new in a new initiative you're starting actually is useful. So of course, I mean, whatever you do, that's basically um, is a choice involved. Is it the right investment? Especially within government, you know, with public and in Estonia with limited public resources, right? So uh, we don't just do things for the hell of it, right? For the cool factor only. So there is some, has to be some business case and reasoning behind. And that's what you have to develop and convince others about. If you get the first to follow and you then you have sort of proof of concept and prototypes working, you know, it's easier to sell forward in a way, right? Yes, yeah, so it's not only top down to say, okay, you're going to do this and good luck with that, but it's also really uh, uh, focusing on the added value of the new products. So people, are, uh, they, they really have to prove themselves, okay, what's in it for me? And then other people will also start using it. Uh, so added value and the other thing, I mean, we, we really try to learn from the best practices of uh, Estonian mafia, it's called, you know, our great uh, startup industry and, and world and companies. So for example, uh, not just added value, but really the MVP, the sort of, you know, the, what's the core thing? What's the core value that they're trying to deliver, right? Um, we tr we, in Estonia, we like to keep things simple. And usually government bureaucracies otherwise try to make things very complicated. <laughs> so this means that let's say if you're trying to introduce something new, everybody tries to add to that. So one trick in a way is that actually it really keep focusing on the MVP, delivering that and then keep sort of you know building on top of that in a way, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and, and um, so what you're doing, uh, because you also, uh, you also said, okay, we're not uh, uh, doing everything ourselves, so we are building a platform, a, a basic where mm -hmm. others can can add new services on. Uh, can you also give some examples about new services that are added by other other companies or, or individuals mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on the platform? Sure. So, uh, for example, um, let's take the case of Xroad, uh, which is Estonian data exchange pla environment. Um, on top of that, uh, of course, all the government agencies, whenever they come up with this, is something some service usually need to pull some data from other parts of government as well, right? So this is a new, it's not a new example, it's a rather old one in Estonia, but uh, tax declarations. Uh, tax declarations in Estonia, they're a very easy affair. Uh, for, it takes you three minutes if you're slow. <laughs> so just to fill your personal income tax declaration, because it is pre-filled in our case. 
we have the records throughout the year anyway. Different parts of government have them. So based on X-Road, we just pull them together and you just see a brief little declaration. You will, you know, review it. If there are no sort of corrections to be made, you just next, 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 submit, you're done. Mm -hmm. Next year, actually, we will make it automated. <laughs> so that, you know, based, we say that based on your records, on our records, um, your outcome is this. If you're unhappy, please go online and change. If not, you don't have to do anything. So. Again, this is an example of, you know, basically by, by the ability to pull data together, to, to share this data at the end of the day for the user, for the citizen, for entrepreneur, service is much more uh, easy and, and useful. Or um, I can take another example, um, again talking about X-Road, then um, our energy companies now are building a smart grid and sort of the whole sort of data exchange that goes along with that. Let's say uh, data about uh, capacity, uh, you know, market prices, whatever, sort of how much volume are they producing and so forth uh, on X-Road. So all this sort of energy data between so many different private uh, companies will be flowing on, on top of the platform. So they are building an application of that basically in a smart grid mode on top of the national sort of, you know, data exchange environment. So yeah. And uh, so like uh, uh, when I'm starting a company in, in, in Estonia uh, through, a, uh, 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 through my e-residence uh, card, can I also then have access to the platform or, or, or do you really have to be in, in the country yourself? Um, no, you don't have to be in the country yourself. But the thing is that say if, um, if, you're, um, if you're starting a company and yes, you want to use it uh, on top of your services. So that means two things. First of all, if you want to use it within your product, then basically exactly we can make a license arrangement in a way, right? So exactly you will be you know, one in a number of users like that. Or the other way around, if you need to pull, let's say if you want to, for your uh, service or product, use some data from, let's say, that the government holds uh, or some other parts of private sector hold, then the question is that you basically need to link up to them through the X road. Again, um, install a security server, uh, you know, may, we have to audit you to make sure that exactly you get all the sort of, you know, things right that you not become a vulnerability in the system. That's it, you're good to go, right? So, e residence in itself is not a pre requirement for that. Uh, any company can do that, uh, foreign or Estonian really for that matter. But yeah, having e residence just helps you to set up a company. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's that start. And, and, and it's only 50 euros, so <laughs> yes. that's a good investment. Uh, well, uh, th th well, yeah, but yeah, just, just to be fair, I mean, starting a company, there's also a bit of more state fee involved. But yeah, the card is 50 euros. <laughs> And uh, talking about uh, security, because uh, uh, in the Netherlands they were also uh, looking for, okay, how can we vote online? Uh, because then much more people will vote, I guess. Uh, uh, and how can we share our medical data online? Yep. Uh, they spent millions, many millions of euros uh, in projects to manage that, but they all failed. And all one of the key facts of why they failed uh, or the excuses was, mm -hmm. okay, we can secure it. So at what way? Because uh, mm -hmm. uh, making a, 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 a country digital mm -hmm. is also uh, quite exciting, uh, but also scary because it makes mm -hmm. you also really for, uh, vulnerable about, okay, but uh, what, uh, uh, mm -hmm. th then also bad people know where they can hit you, not with a uh, uh, army, but with a cyber army. So in what way are you making sure right. that, that, uh, that everything is safe, so the data is safe, but also that nobody can hack the country and then uh, stop the country uh, right, uh, right. working? Well, talking about the threat sort of scenarios, I mean, just, you know, hitting you with an army is even in some ways a simple thing. That's a capacity thing, sort of, you have to just basically counter the attacks. Much harder is, you know, single guy behind a computer hacking you on purpose, you know, with a very targeted mission and very sort of hard to detect, right? So, so basically what I'm saying is the threat landscape is very diverse in a way. But to answer your question, so um, we have always taken cyber security and privacy protection for that matter really so seriously. And the reason is that, uh, you know, again, if you don't do that, I mean, how can we offer things online? How can we have people trust us uh, with the data or to use the service? And you know, if they don't, you know, can we, we cannot provide this to the government. So we're taking it very seriously. And But having said that, we, we view this exactly as risks. Things you cannot fend away, things that you know, will be there anyway, so things you, but things you can manage. So, so basically for us, let's say cybersecurity and working on that, is not a barrier, but we see it as an enabler. That's something we have to do in order to be digital, right? So, uh, so yeah, and, and we work on that on different levels. I mean, um, I already have spoken about the ID card, but you know, that's basically one part of cybersecurity. This allows to have a sort of trusted relationship or trusted transaction online between me and my government, for example, or me and my bank and whatever. 
uh, bank can trust me and I can trust the other way around, right? So they would know it's really me logging in, for example, uh, unless I've given my codes to somebody, for example, you, and you can use my card. Then I'm the one liable anyway. So the card, uh, again, we talked about X-Road, so any sort of exchange of data happening uh, is, is secured, cryptic, uh, timestamp, and so forth, to make sure that it doesn't get changed or lost on the way. Um, and finally, we do work a lot on, on cyber security, let's say, prevention and, and reaction side. So uh, making sure that you know, if intrusion happens for one way or another, we find out about it fast, we're able to react fast uh, and also limit the damage, really. And, and the prevention I mentioned, so a lot of that work also revolves with people and the users, you know, giving them the knowledge and the skills and the understanding that how to be securely online. Um, so yeah, that's all these different components have to come to the game. But really, that's how we see that we can manage the risk. We cannot take it away, but we can at least manage that then to a very sort of high degree. Yeah, and, and, and you're now busy uh, for, for over 15 years uh, with, with, uh, with the whole E-Estonia mm -hmm. uh, 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 project, or how to, uh, the, how to name it. Yeah. Um, are you also looking about, okay, how can we teach other countries? Uh, so how can we share our lessons and also maybe also from business pers perspective yep. uh, to other countries? Uh, because, yeah, um, many people don't have 15 years uh, time sure. Uh, sure. Uh, to implement. So are you also busy with that? Uh, we are actually, and, and we are in a showroom here, it's uh, the Estonia showroom in Tallinn. This is just one physical location where you can basically, for example, learn a lot about our experience and different solutions that the companies are providing for the government or, or otherwise. Um, so I just want to say one more thing about the 15 years. So for us, it's been, you know, again, long in the making and lots of learning on the go, sort of. I think uh, others have an advantage in a way. Technology has moved forward. There are hours and others other countries' lessons to build upon, so it doesn't have to take that long anymore, mm. if you're willing to change. <laughs> so again, if, if there's a willingness to really transform how a government operates and, and goes about doing its things. And um, we do, um, I'm happy to say, we do get lots of uh, visitors and interest from other governments uh, in Europe and beyond. Um, but again, to the best of our ability, we try to then exactly have them here, uh, come share our lessons, meet the people here, uh, meet the companies who are providing the solutions. So really exactly with the idea that we are very happy if somebody you know, takes our experience, or, and especially if they take, for example, yeah, the knowledge and expertise of our private sector, uh, our partners, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and build up something great digital at their home. So we are, that, that's the ideal scenario for us in a way. So we're very happy to pursue that. And, uh, long story but short, um, we do also work, especially in Europe, on, um, let's say, with other governments, on setting up uh, linkages between governmental systems, which is not for export reasons or, or export promotion, but this is really to uh, serve our people and other investors and, and companies and people traveling uh, better, right? So that you know, they would be able to sign in different countries with one ID, uh, use services across the border, also in digital sense, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so in the end, when you're talking about Europe, I think this will be the ultimate tool uh, to, to really unite Europe, uh, talking about doing business across borders. But, but I think it's, uh, the, the, the top-down approach uh, through Brussels uh, uh, won't work, so I think you really have to start by uh, working together with, with different countries, and then from there, mm -hmm. there grow. Well, that, that's one thing, I mean, you have to still keep the process part too, but for example, us to Indeed, just like you're saying, uh, we're trying to work the most with our neighbors here, Finland and others, especially Finland. Um, for example, with Finland, it's already this way that um, we can mutually sign. So a Finnish person with their ID and an Estonian person with our ID, they can sign the same document. So basically, infrastructures are compatible. Um, we are now sharing XROAD, our sort of basic platform with them. Finland is building their own national data exchange on top of it or let's say using our solution, but then we will also be connecting our governments, hopefully, on, so across the border. So, and exactly with the reason to, again, provide an example and a proof of concept, and, and, and finally, mm, even on cross-border level, basically you have to take the benefits and costs into account between neighbors, or neighboring countries, there's the most of traffic happening anyway, so that's the biggest business case. So it makes sense to start, really, in that, and then, you know, ex extend it to the rest of uh, Europe or beyond, yeah. Yeah, and 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 Estonia is 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 a relatively small country. A oh, very small. Do, uh, do you think you uh, you could ever afford the service you're offering now to your uh, uh, to the people living here uh, uh, by doing it at a traditional uh, way? Um, I don't. 
and and well and the reason I think so is that we started but in the first place doing things digital because we didn't have enough money so uh, it was really seen that perhaps digital way of providing services uh, digital systems within government in the back office would be ways to be more cost efficient and effective as a government so basically even if you're small and and um, our economic policy line is that we don't want to tax companies and people high too high so if you if you don't tax them high and if you're small but you still want to be fully country right uh, have defense everything going on which means you have to be very effective in how to do things so we thought digital might be the way and it actually has been proven to be so so yeah and um, that's why I say that you know we probably cannot afford the analog and traditional ways otherwise or we wouldn't be as far as we luckily are in in economic and national development by this point yeah well, maybe that's also <clears throat> a, a barrier f f for this 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 idea and, and this technique to grow in other countries because I guess like in the Netherlands uh, when we uh, would implement this these things mm -hmm. maybe they can fire about half of their their staff because they don't need it anymore Oh, the other way, around, but but let's say even if you don't um, necessarily let people go, um, what we have found out the most important factor is that yes, you can let perhaps some people go, but but you can reorient or refocus what the others do, and that's even more fundamentally valuable. So basically, even as a government, you get more sort of value for money out of the, your people and time resource. Um, you could be doing more, delivering better in a way, right? They don't they don't have to. People don't have to be busy with menial tasks of you know. Uh, handling the papers or you know checking the papers or whatever things things can happen automatically they can rather focus on things that add value to uh, everyday life in the country yeah yeah that's an interesting thought uh, because the thing about the positive way that people can really add, add, add a better value because the basic stuff is being handled yeah. through uh, through the system right, right. Okay. we all have 24 hours anyway right you know in every country <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right that's uh, that's something we have similar in, in every country <laughs> okay uh, thank you for the interview i think it's really exciting what you're doing over here and i hope it's uh, many country will, will follow. Uh, I will p uh, p uh, pick up my uh, e-resident card in, uh, in The Hague, in the Netherlands, uh, in, in yes. a couple of weeks. Yes. And uh, looking forward to using it. So thank, thank you. you for the interview. Thank you, and uh, thanks for joining us as an e-Estonian.